In this lesson, we're going to look at graphing the tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant functions. And we're going to use the sine and cosine functions to do that. And we're going to start off by graphing each of these from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. So I'm going to mark off as I would if I were to graph a sine or a cosine function. We're also going to start with the fact that the tangent function equals the sine of an angle over the cosine of an angle. And so what I know is that when cosine is equal to zero, I'm going to get a vertical asymptote. When the denominator is equal to zero, I'll get a vertical asymptote. Now, from, from zero to two pi, we know that cosine is equal to zero at pi over two, a quarter of the way, and at three quarters of the way, at three pi over two. So I'm going to mark off, put my vertical asymptotes in, And I know that's also going to happen at negative 3 pi over 2 and at negative pi over 2. I also know that when the numerator in a fraction is equal to 0 and the denominator is some non-zero value, that the value of that fraction is going to equal 0. So I know that the tan function is going to have x-intercepts when the sine is equal to 0. And sine x equals 0 from 0 to 2 pi at the beginning, so it's 0, halfway at pi, and at the end at 2 pi. And also, if I go from negative 2 pi to 0, it's going to happen at, uh, I'll get a 0 or an x-intercept at negative 2 pi and at negative pi. All right, I know that functions generally will tend towards their vertical asymptotes, but what I'd like to do is to just evaluate uh, two more points to give me a general idea of the value of the, or the, the way this kind of curve behaves. So if I look at pi over 4, I know that the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Since I know that tangent is an odd function, I know that the tangent of negative pi over 4 is actually negative 1. And so the tangent function, it's a slight curve and it approaches its asymptotes. The same exact thing will happen. Um, so in other words, if I am, if I go over pi over 4 to the right of a 0, I'm up 1. So when I'm at pi, if I go over 1 pi over 4 unit to the right, then this pi would be 4 pi over 4. This value would actually be, the x value would be 5 pi over 4. But when I go over 1 pi over 4 to the right, I'm going to go up 1, and I have another point. And when I go pi over 4 to the left, I'm going to go down 1, and I have another point. And so my tan function will hug its asymptotes, and then there's a slight curve. almost looks linear in the middle. And then that, that will keep repeating, that pattern will keep repeating infinitely many times. Okay. So What's important in graphing a tan function is to be able to, to know the domain. And the domain is basically all real numbers except where you have these uh, vertical asymptotes. And we know the vertical asymptotes are where the cosine of x equals 0. And, you know, you don't want to say things like x cannot equal pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. But if I look at the pattern, where tan has vertical asymptotes, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. Those are odd multiples of pi over 2. So I'm going to start off by writing it in words. But mathematically, there's a much, there's a much nicer way of saying that, and it is this. The domain is going to be x, such that x cannot equal k times pi over 2, or just k pi over 2, where k is an odd integer. So that's the domain. I know that tan has x-intercepts where the sine function is equal to 0, and so it's just really nice to know that. Those zeros are going to happen at 0, pi, and 2 pi, um, if I continue to fill this whole graph in. and. The way I would say that 
is that tan has zeros or x-intercepts at multiples of pi. But to say multiples of pi, we'll say x-intercepts occur when x equals k pi. k is an integer. In this case, not an odd integer, but just an integer. So in order to graph a tan function, you really need to just understand the basic features of your sine and cosine function to get your x-intercepts and to get your vertical asymptotes. And then you should evaluate just two points. If you can get two values, um, one to the right and one to the left of an x-intercept, then, then you can realize the pattern. The last bit of information about the tangent function that I want to talk about is the period. And we know that the period for sine and cosine functions is 2 pi. And remember, the period is the radians over which the function completes one cycle, and the cycle is the repeating portion. And so for tangent, you can see that between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, we have one cycle. And between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, we have another cycle. And so the period for tangent is pi. So t the tangent function completes one cycle over pi radians. So we're going to graph cotan the same exact way, and I'd actually like you to pause the video and see if you can come up with your own graph. I would use pencil or use some scrap, um, you can use a scrap blank trig paper, but do the same thing. Write the cotan as the cosine x over sine x and find where the, now where the sine x is equal to zero you're going to get vertical asymptotes and where the cosine of x equals zero you're going to get zeros. Alright, so I've marked off the um, the axes the same way I would if I were to graph a sine or cosine curve and this time this is going to be slightly different because I know that where the tangent function, if we look up here, has zeros the cotan is going to have vertical asymptotes. And so, oh, the same thing, when sine of x equals 0, so it would be at 0, pi, 2 pi. So I'm going to mark those off, my vertical asymptotes. I know where, um, so sine of x equals 0 at multiples of pi, so I've got my vertical asymptotes written in. The cosine of x equals 0 at odd multiples of pi over 2, so that's where I'm going to have my x-intercepts. So I'm going to fill those in. And then the next thing we need to do is to, again, mark off some values that we know. So I would say to the left of a, um, a pi over 2, at pi over 4, the tangent, so the tangent and the cotangent of pi over 4 are both 1. Then we'll look at 3 pi over 4, and think about where 3 pi over 4 is. 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant and tan, uh, cotan and cotan are negative here. So at 3 pi over 4, the, the cotan is going to be negative 1. The shape is going to be the same as the, the cotan, only it's going to be, it's actually shifted over a little bit and inverted. So we are going to follow this curve and we want to approach our asymptotes. So to the left of, um, you know, pi over 4 to the left of a 0, I'm going to go up 1. And then at pi over 4 to the right of a 0, I'm going to go down 1. And approach our zeros, approach, excuse me, approach our, our vertical asymptotes. Okay, so we have hit all of our zeros, or x-intercepts. Um, we added the two extra points to help us complete the curve. They, there is a curve there, but it really, in the middle piece of each, you know, around the zeros, they are almost linear. So now let's summarize the, uh, the features of the, the cotan function, and we'll start by stating the domain. And so here, um, again, where we had x-intercepts on the tan function, we're going to have vertical asymptotes in the in the cotan function. So the domain domain is x such that x cannot equal multiples of pi or k pi. K is an integer. 
our x-intercepts occur when in the tan function we had vertical asymptotes and so our x-intercepts occur when x equals k pi over 2 where k is an odd integer and you can see here that the period for cotan is the same as the period for for tan right we get one cycle from 0 to pi from pi to 2 pi so the period is pi